Leeds United, and I think this is something I and I think all the listeners would want to know. Uh, that's I think the first time you were formally introduced to coaching, right? That you had a coach who was you know now probably putting you in training sessions, giving you objectives. Uh, and you know, from there onwards, to make it professional, um, you know, I'm sure a lot of your peers in Leeds United didn't make it, but then you did, right? So I think for a young player today who's listening onto this podcast as well, uh, you know, what are some of the things? Can you describe those experiences the first time at Leeds United? Uh, what were the difficulties you faced mentally, socially, physically as well? Uh, but and what really got you through this? Like you actually made it. Well, if 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 we we take the the, the, the four corners as we talk about, and I do talk about because I, I you know it, it it really interests me, and I've 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 spoke to a lot of uh, professors and and professionals and professional coaches all over the world. You know, uh, one being John Erdman, who I was in uh, New Zealand with. He, he's now he took Canada to the, the the World Cup. Fantastic insight, fantastic mind for a young boy, but. For me, you see, it was, uh, the, and I say that love, didn't get no formal coaching. We had the PE teacher, uh, we had the local coach, but, it, you know, they turned around and says, if you're a good player, you can play. Go on and play. You don't need, go on and play. Be exciting. Go on and learn. Make mistakes. We never got scolded for making mistakes, you know, at, in the younger ages, because we had nobody to scold us. <laughs> we just went out there and play, played. Yeah. But once you start going now into that, okay, in a minute, I'm going on tryouts. I'm going for trials for me, uh, you know, my state team. I'm going trials for my city team. You know, now you start seeing, hang on a minute. Now, this is a lot different now from just playing regular community football. Sure. You're coming now to that stage where you're thinking, now it's getting a little bit harder, so I need to be that much better. And I remember going for my first try at Manchester City. Uh, and my, my first shirt was a Manchester City shirt. Now, living in Salford, not a lot of people had a Manchester City shirt. Yeah. That was probably because it was really fast, running away from all the Manchester United uh, fans all the time. But I had this blue, and it was my first jersey I had, you know, and my yep. first pair of football boots, I'll show you one day. Mm -hmm. And I thought to myself, now I've got a kit. Now my first trial was at Manchester City. And I, I'm not the biggest boy, and I'm, com I'm coming onto this field and I'm seeing Alex Williams, who used to play for Manchester City. And I'm thinking, these guys are massive compared to what I'm playing against. I'm thinking, well, now, technically, technically, I have to be up there. Yep. Forget tactically. That doesn't interest me, tactically. Sure. Socially, I'm a quiet lad anyway. I learn. Physically, I can run and I'm quick. So I've got two little blocks there. I know I can get through on. I'm OK, yep. I can get, I can compete. Yep. OK, then. So I remember having my first uh, tryout and I'm thinking, these lads come out, they had fives like tree trunks, they had all their oil on, and, look, and I'm thinking, my word, I'm, never, I'm not going to be able to do this. But I had that inner spirit yeah. because I'd worked on the streets, I'd learned off the TV, and my mental capacity in the social kind was I can compete with you guys. So I remember competing, and I remember a coach saying, I'd taken the ball, you know, uh, driving the ball up the field, and I lost it, but I didn't run back. And he turned around to me and said, little Mr. Phelan, wonderful gun with the ball, and you're exciting, but you also have to run back. Oh, okay then, now the tactical implements was coming in. I have to run back, I have to work hard, I have to think about yeah. you know, the fitness side of it. And that stuck in my mind ever since. Uh, but my first trout was with Manchester City, and it's a yeah. lovely story, I could have signed for Manchester City as a, a 12-year-old, okay. four-year contract, I declined it. I declined Manchester United, Liverpool, Everton, mm -hmm. Tottenham, Oldham, all these wonderful little clubs. Uh, but for me, it was going to Leeds United, moving away from home, which was going to be an experience. Leeds United was a club in transition. It was in the old second division. Uh, they had a wonderful coaches there, Keith Mincher, Pete Gumby. They had the older players, Alan Clark come to me home, uh, Eddie Gray was playing then, Frank Gray, world superstars within the, the rights, World Cups they've been to, played for the countries. And I'm thinking, Man City, first division, buying players for a million pounds back then. Am I really going to get a chance? 
Uh, now, I didn't have a lot of guidance. It was the guidance of the, uh, the technical committee at Leeds United and the chief scout, Terry. We believe in the next four to five years, you'll play for the first team. Come to us. And I says, OK, then I'm leaving home. I'm leaving all my friends. I'm leaving. I want to be professional. I'm going to go to Leeds United. My coaching started then. I started intro getting introduced to coaching at 14, 14 years of age. Yeah. Real co I'm on about coaching where you've got to be aware. But what I used to do, I used to go out on my own and I used to coach myself, do shadow play myself, you know, okay. and, and, you know, using that imagination, which you hit on before. Coaches, yeah, Terry, go out there. They didn't co over coach you yeah. because you was decent players. They didn't over coach you. They never knocked it out of you. They were strict, but they knew the players they was having they had that little sense of ability and that sense of technical ability, tactical ability. And, you know, they had that freedom of expression. Sure. They had that freedom uh, to dribble. Why are we stopping people from dribbling when we need dribbles? Because we need ball carriers. Yeah. Why do I hear coaches saying, don't dribble past the ball? Why do I, I, I hear that all the time? And I'm thinking, but we need dribblers, we need ball carriers, no matter yeah. where they dribble. And from the, from the coaches, it was all about expressing yourself express yourself have the courage to make mistakes have the courage to get better and that's what we was given at uh, Leeds United and especially off somebody called Keith Minter who was 10 years 10 years away ahead of anybody else yeah. we used to do simple things simple things we didn't have a million cones down to make the field look great like an airway we used uh, a, a runway sorry we used to do simple things there's a ball there's an area if you're doing your ball manipulation, go in there and do your ball manipulation. If you're doing high balls, low balls, it was so simple, but it was an effective way yeah. of teaching, you know, and, sure. and, and we enjoyed it. Uh, but when I was having my trials for Leeds, it was 11 v 11 on Ellen Road. And I remember picking the ball up just over the halfway line. And there was around about two or 3,000 people watching, uh, kids from all over, all over uh, England. And I picked the ball up and I thought, Terry, come on then, let them show them what you can do. And I'm honest, this is honest, you know, no ego here or anything. And I picked the ball up and I thought, well, just have a go, just dribble and have a go. And, you know, knocked the ball and it went in the top corner. And I thought, that's what it's all about, Terry, being exciting, being exciting with the ball. Yeah. And if you watch the Manchester City goal I scored Me, against Tottenham. That's, that's your famous goal, you've seen that. It was something like that, Same but thing. on the other, yep. other side of the halfway Correct. line. And Correct. it's about being exciting and, and not, not, not killing the self-esteem and motivation of the, of the students, whether they're younger, middle or older, keeping oh. them active, having that element of fun with them and all, but the love. So, yeah, and then we started uh, training with other lads and you get better because you've got the best players around you now. You're playing against the best teams. You only get better if you've got the better players with you and it's best with best, best against best. Otherwise, it's not, <laughs> otherwise you're not gonna, you're not gonna progress. Yeah. And it was brilliant, you know, you're playing against your Paul Gascoigne's at Newcastle, you're playing against the Manchester United's and your Mark users in the youth teams. Surely you're getting better. Yeah. Uh, but I used to relish, relish the challenge and it was, it was great. The coaching was simple, but it was effective, you know? Right. We didn't have no uh, TV analysts. We didn't have no video analysts. We'd, we didn't have all that then. Yeah. You know, we just had, you know, go out there, use your imagination and play and be exciting. Yeah. Correct. I can, I can see a lot of time um, being spent with yourself as well on the ball, uh, doing extra work outside of the coaching hours. That's, that's something I'm picking up. And you've, you've mentioned this a few times, right? and this is, I, I think, kids today should also be picking this up. Uh, yeah, I mean, I mean we, we say that, but don't forget society's changed from that yeah. when I was a young boy. Yeah. We didn't have uh, the finer things what the, the, the younger children have got now. You know, if yeah. you go in and maybe to the poorer areas, they'll have a ball at the feet all the time. You go to somewhere like uh, Kerala, you know, yeah. Goa, you know, them hotbeds, the northeast, they'll have a ball because maybe they haven't got uh, they're not fortunate enough to maybe have a PlayStation at home and, sure. you, know, uh, you know, these video rooms. Yeah. You know, the only thing they've got is a football to play with yeah. their friends and commute. Yeah. It's a way of communicating and all, believe it. But I, I do believe if you want to get better at anything, anything, 
Yeah. Put the hours in. Correct. Put the hours in. And if you put yeah. the hours in and uh, we talk about hard work before anything else, then you've got to start. You've got to, but you've got to love the game. Sure. You've got to love the game if you want to go to the next level. Yeah. If you don't want to go to the next level, then you're playing for fun. You're playing to, just to come and meet friends and have a little bit of fun and yeah. learn little, uh, little tidbits. Yeah. Which, if is, you, if, which is good, but which yeah, is if, good. if you want to make it to... If, if you want yeah. to make it to the next level and go up yeah. that pyramid, you've got to work as hard as the next person. I always had this thing in me, never be outworked on a football field or never be hard worked in training, outworked in training. Yeah. Yeah. So the coaching was there, but you have to bring yourself along and all. Nobody can help you, only yourself. Sure, absolutely.